and sitting here with Tennessee defensive coordinator Tim Banks. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. How are you today? I'm doing well. Appreciate you guys having me. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, th this offseason, entering year number two, spring practice, and then coming into this phase of the offseason, you know, strength and conditioning. Now, how is the mindset of your, your defense? Took a lot of strides in year number one, but, you know, how was it going into this next step uh, here at Tennessee? Yeah, so, so far so good. You know, the guys are working really hard. You know, I felt really good about the spring we had. Um, you know, obviously they're working really hard conditioning right now. And, you know, obviously we got some newcomers there. So, you know, so far so good. You know how it is. You know, we don't, you know, obviously last year was last year. You know, we're, we're really trying to lay a foundation, you know, coming out of spring and obviously, you know, this summer, you know, to try to, you know, obviously, you know, put the best brand of football out there we possibly can. So, um, I know the guys are genuinely excited about it, you know, particularly returning guys. And obviously, like I said, got a couple freshmen out there that I hear good things about. So um, it's, it's a good time. Kind of working from the front back in your defense, you uh, did have to say goodbye to three contributors last season that played a whole lot of snaps for you, but you returned two guys on the outside and Byron Young and Tyler Barron that have a lot of experience. What are they going to mean for you guys up front to, to try to live on that side of the line of scrimmage? Yeah, they're, they're going to obviously play important roles for us, you know, starting with BY, you know, obviously we thought, um, you know, he started to play his best, you know, uh, brand of football toward the middle to the end of the season. So uh, we thought he really finished on a good note. You know, as you look at his body, you can see, you know, how it's continuing to mature. You know, he's put on good, healthy weight. Um, I think the game has started to slow down for him. So, you know, we're, we're definitely um, anticipating a great year on from him. Um, then you go to Tyler. You know, Tyler obviously battled through some injuries, things of that nature. But, you know, I thought he had a really good spring. You know, when you look at his body, you can see how it's changed. He looks a lot stronger. You know, he's definitely com comfortable in the system. Um, so we're obviously going to need those guys with, with, along with the rest of the guys to play well. But, you know, anytime you got some veteran guys returning, you know, that are as talented as those guys are, you know, you're definitely expecting big things. You know, inside a guy that's been here, it feels like five or six years is Craw Garland, but Amari Thomas, he's, you know, heard great things about him this offseason, stepping up and becoming a leader and Elijah Simmons and, and some new faces like Tyree West and, of course, Jordan Phillips. Uh, what's that inside group going to look like to Sean Terry? And is it going to be a strength and numbers type situation? I would assume you guys want to play a lot of guys up front. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head. You know, I think it'll be, you know, strength in numbers. You know, we feel like we have some really talented guys in there who, again, have played some significant reps for us. And hopefully we'll have a chance to be able to, um, you know, to a degree, you know, roll those guys. So uh, it's an exciting time. You know, I think, you know, everywhere I've been, you know, the better you are up front, you know, which is cliche as it sounds, you know, the better the defense is. And we definitely got a lot of pieces back and, you know, we're hoping that, you know, with that experience, you know, they'll continue to take some strides and, you know, we'll be able to play a bunch of guys at, the, at those spots. Looking at the linebacker position, I mean, this was a group last year, obviously, that not a whole lot of depth and primarily played three guys once Juwan Mitchell was out with injury. But uh, does it feel like that spot in the defense, you feel a whole lot better about it this time, you know, now than you did back in the season? Because I feel like you do have more options to where you hope to play some more guys as well. Yeah, we, we definitely have more options. You know, obviously, you don't have a ton of experience in that room outside of the guys that did play. Um, but again, I, I think we, we've got more guys at every spot, quite honestly, you know, whether it's DBs, whether it's D-line, linebackers, et cetera. Uh, so anytime you have numbers, you know, the expectation is that, you know, you get what you earn, you know. So I know it'll be a lot of guys fighting for playing time, which in turn helps us play better as a defense. So. Um, but yeah, you know, right now going into the summer, you know, obviously we had some guys who signed early, you know, Elijah comes to mind, uh, but we thought, you know, as a freshman had a really good, um, you know, spring campaign, you know, he'll be better than he was coming out of for coming out of spring. And then obviously with the returning guys that have played from Beasley to Banks um, and even having Mitchell back and, you know, having Pack and uh, Paige back, you know, we feel like we have some numbers and we have some experienced guys. You know, with those young guys, we think those guys are going to push really hard to try to earn some playing time. Jeremy Banks took a huge step last season, um, obviously a, an eraser there at the second level, made a whole lot of impactful plays, um, a tackle machine. You know, how can he get better uh, now as a redshirt senior? Yeah, I, I think, you know, just continue to play with the passion and the energy that he played with, but now just refining his game, you know, from some of the small details where, you know, maybe he might have missed a read or a key, but he was just athletic enough to be able to still make the play. 
now he'll be able to make that play instead of, you know, for a two yard game, hopefully he'll be able to hit it in the backfield. So I know he's worked really hard, you know, at, you know, his key read, continuing to grow there and continuing to make sure that he's in the right positions and from a pass coverage perspective. But, you know, what you said earlier is exactly right. You know, he grew leaps and bounds last year and we expect him to take another jump this year as well. Look at a young guy I want to ask you about, and Elijah Herring. I know he didn't get a whole lot of, you know, just been here since the spring, obviously, and it was probably going, you know, really fast for him. But how was he kind of settled in, and what do you like about his game that where he can maybe help you out this year? And obviously, you know, the plan is to help you out a lot down the line. Yeah, we love his size, you know, and we love his mentality. You know, he's a guy who's never satisfied. You know, he's one of those guys you have to kick out the weight room, you know, kick off the field because, you know, he just wants to be good. You know, that just starts with his upbringing and, you know, how he was raised and how important football is to him. Um, but then the next thing that you think out, I think about to me is just his size. You know, he's a big, strong, strapping linebacker, you know, who still has some athleticism. So, um, you know, again, he, he wasn't ready coming out of spring, you know, but I think as he continues to work at it, you know, we think the sky's the limit with him. And it won't surprise me if he if he's fighting, you know, for some playing time this year. Yeah, to replace a couple of guys in the back end, of course, Theo Jackson, who was so big for you guys last season, Alante Taylor, who was a second round draft pick. Those guys are not going to be uh, easy to replace. But when you look at the secondary, I know there's a lot of questions right now, but I think two guys you point towards to to step up in leadership roles and hopefully on the field this year are two experienced safeties and Jalen McCullough and, of course, Trayvon Flowers. Yeah, obviously both those guys played significant roles last year in our defense and, and they're both back. You know, we're expecting both of those guys to continue to grow, you know, not just, um, you know, on the field, but just with their leadership skills. And and they're quite honest, they, they did a tremendous job this spring. You know, um, Tank was very vocal. You know, he's always been a hard worker, but I think he feels now that, you know, he can, you know, be a lot more vocal in terms of leading. And, um, you know, I think Flowers has made some strides as well. So, um, you know, they're, they're great kids, you know, they're kids who want to be, who want to do well, you know, and now obviously stepping into that leadership position, I think they're a lot more comfortable with it. And um, we expect those guys to do it. A younger guy that, uh, you know, was playing a little bit special teams, of course, then uh, unfortunately suffered a bit of an injury that kept him out last season. But uh, a guy that's got a really high ceiling, Christian Charles, you know, safety, played a little cornerback this spring. Uh, you, you move him around an awful lot. Is that kind of the role you might envision for him? And kind of what is – his skill set kind of bring to the table? Because I think he's a guy that Tennessee fans are really excited to see, you know, here in the next couple of years. Yeah, he gives us a great deal of flexibility. You know, a lot of it depends on how some other guys come along, you know, whether we're playing him at safety or playing him at corner. Uh, we just think that, you know, he's a kid who's smart, you know, runs well, you know, has some physical traits in terms of physicality, you know, on the hash and obviously at the corner position. So, um, you know, we, we won't decide exactly where he is, to be honest, and, you know, until we come out of camp. But, you know, the fact that he took, you know, some significant snaps, you know, at corner during the spring, um, obviously played a great role um, on our special teams last season and, and, and played some snaps at safety. So, um, you know, he, he's just one of those kids that it's going to be hard to keep him off the field, whether he's at corner, whether he's at safety, just because of his work ethic, you know, how smart he is and the physical style in which he plays with. Two guys that came in last season that were kind of newcomers, and they both dealt with their fair share of injuries. But I think, you know, if healthy could be a, a vital role for you guys in the secondary, Kamal Haddon and then Brandon Turnage, especially with Turnage, a guy that can play a couple of different spots. Uh, how unique is it to have those type of skill sets and those two guys as, as more options back there for guys that you can rely on? Yeah, super excited to have both those guys back. You know, you know, Turnage obviously, you know, stepped in and helped us in a big way last season. And um, you know, we're expecting him to take some more strides this year as well. Um, Kamal, you know, played some significant snaps in multiple games. And, you know, obviously he'll be better for it as well. So, um, you know, again, I know I sound like a broken record, but the fact that we have so much depth right now, or better depth, I should say, um, I think it's going to be a real heated competition in the back end, you know, for significant. Anytime we have competition, it only makes us better. And, you know, we, we, we really want to make some strides back there. And we think we have some guys in place to make make that happen. You know, there's a lot of guys that will be competing for just a couple of spots. And so we're all intrigued to see how that kind of plays out for sure. Come fall camp um, took a lot of strides as a unit last year, uh, you know, set a, a program record. It looked like for having over 100 TFLs and did a lot of great things. And I know the answer to this is you can get better in a number of different areas. But what are some areas that you guys are really 
pushing towards to, to take leaps and bounds here from year one to year two as a unit defensively? Yeah, you know, get, getting off the field more consistently, you know, obviously, you know, tackles for losses and things of that nature and the mayhem is awesome, you know, but being able to, you know, win third downs more consistently, you know, is something that we've worked really hard on in the spring and we'll continue to work hard on it, um, you know, in the fall. But as I stated earlier, you know, every year is a new year, you know, how guys, you know, slide into new roles, new leadership roles, you know, new positions to a degree, you know, it's a different year. So, you know, we always start from scratch, you know, and build it, you know, but if we had to point at one thing in particular, you know, coming out of last season, you know, we have to be able to affect the quarterback better on third and long situations. And like I said, we feel like we've addressed it in the spring and we'll continue to address it in the fall and, you know, we'll, we'll see where we go. Johnny with Tennessee defensive coordinator, Tim Banks, and just a couple more and we'll get you out of here. Um, as a secondary coach, I know this will sound as a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, how important is it to get a consistent pass rush with your front four without having to bring guys from the second or the third layer? I would have, I would feel like it would help out immensely. And, and do you think as a unit, you guys are close up there to getting that more consistently? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it, it all works hand in hand, you know, to be quite honest with you. I know it's cliche to say, you know, the, the front, you know, obviously the better they play, the better the back end is. Well, you know, obviously the, the longer you can stay in coverage, the better it is for the front. So mm -hmm. I think those all go hand in hand. You know, we, we got to continue to play tight coverage on the back end and we got to continue to get to the quarterback, you know, uh, in a timely manner. So I, I think both of those things go hand in hand. Um, you know, can we get there with four? You know, we're working very hard to be able to do that. I think it obviously gives you some flexibility on the back end from a coverage perspective, you know, whether it's man, you know, hot zones, you know, you name it, you know, when you don't have to spin and bring five, you know, six guys, it just gives you the ability to do different things on the back end, which hopefully, um, you know, can confuse the quarterback even more and give those guys a chance to, to win. So, uh, but will we be better at it? I like to think we will be, you know, I think those guys have, you know, work really hard during the, um, the spring and they're continuing to work hard this summer. But as I stated earlier, you know, we've worked very hard to play tighter coverage and, you know, give those guys some more opportunities to get home. You and Willie Martinez go way back. In fact, he was one time your position coach and now you guys work together in that secondary. What's it been like working with him? And I know you guys have kept a close relationship throughout your, your coaching career, but what's it like being with him every single day and, and still watching and learning from him? Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, Coach Martinez has obviously, you know, um, been coaching a long time, you know, has done it at a high level everywhere he's been. So um, he hasn't changed, you know, except maybe some of the gray hair, you know, that he had, um, you know, very intense, you know, very knowledgeable. Um, you know, I, I, I tell recruits this all the time, you know, it's, it's not for me, you know, a lot of coaches talk about treating them like your son and, and loving on them and all those things when they get on campus. Well, I was able to experience that firsthand, you know, him and his wife, Miss Kim, you know, were nothing but great to me and uh, my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife now. And, um, you know, everything he says is very authentic. You know, he, he's very passionate about the game of football and he's passionate about kids in general. So um, I had a chance to live it, you know, so for me, when I'm, you know, talking about UT and our coaching staff, it's not something I think, you know, in particular when you're dealing with coach Martinez, it's something that I live. So, um, yeah, he's a wonderful coach. You know, we have a, a tremendous defensive staff here, a tremendous staff, to be quite honest with you, on both sides of the ball. Uh, but obviously having a guy that I consider a mentor growing up in the profession and now having a chance to work alongside of him, you know, has been been awesome for me. And then finally, last thing I got for you, man, uh, what's it like uh, coaching with uh, Coach Heupel and kind of being you know, his defensive coordinator um, in his program? What do you like in, in terms of the direction and his leadership? And uh, what's it like uh, being on the other side of Heupel in those practice settings? Yeah, it's, it's, it's been awesome. You know, co Coach is a, is a football guy. You know, he loves ball. Um, you know, he obviously he's cut his teeth on that side of the ball on offense. And, you know, they definitely give us some challenging looks and challenging um, 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 attack. They try to attack us in some different multiple ways, I should say. And so it really makes us better. You know, you talk about iron sharpening iron every day. You know, just what we get to see from that offense, you know, between him and Coach Golis and the, and the scheme in which they try to attack, you know, really helps us obviously moving forward on Saturdays. But, you know, obviously I didn't know Coach Hype as a man, um, but he has not disappointed. You know, he definitely loves the kids. You know, he's a tremendous leader. Um, you know, he's, he's not one of those guys who believe he invented football. You know, he's very down to earth. He's very genuine in everything he does. And, 
you know, for me, you know, life is way too short. You know, I've done this, I've done this for a long time. And, you know, you want to come to work with people that, you know, you obviously uh, respect, you know, and people that truly, you know, have the vision similar to you. And that's what I feel with Coach um, Hype. You know, he has a great vision, you know, a vision of us playing hard, being tough, being smart, you know, but loving these kids just as hard and, and enjoying what we do and, and having fun in the process. So um, it's, it's been awesome. You know, it's been a good ride so far, you know, and definitely looking to go to battle with him again. You know, can't wait to get going. SEC media days in just a couple of weeks, and then it's camp time, and it won't be long before uh, Tennessee's kicking off, and it's football time in Tennessee. This is Tennessee defensive coordinator Tim Banks. Coach, thank you so much for your time, and i uh, love to chat a little ball with you again sometime. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Appreciate you guys, and looking forward to teeing this thing up. Thank you. Thank you.